And now I want to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. So uh, we just discussed the radio as one of the maybe more surprising uh, ranges within the electromagnetic spectrum. Radio is, you know, there's a common misconception that it's sound, but no, it's light. So it's a light wave that's emitted by the radio station, picked up by your radio receiver, and then decoded to produce sound through a speaker. So radio is light. And when we look at the entire electromagnetic spectrum, um, there's actually a lot of different types of light that are not what we're used to thinking of when we think of light, which is the visible range. So if we think of our visible range, um, there's a high energy end of the spectrum with the high frequency. And so that high frequency violet light is next to the ultraviolet portion of the spectrum. Um, you can remember that this, that violet is the high frequency, high energy part because ultraviolet rays are damaging to our DNA, right? As are X-rays and gamma rays. So everything on this side of the visible spectrum is in effect um, ionizing radiation that can have the potential to damage DNA. Whereas over on the red side of the spectrum, starting from red in the visible and moving to even longer and longer wavelengths, we go to the infrared, which is uh, heat. You might've seen an infrared camera that you can kind of, uh, there's one at the science museum here in town where you can see your face in infrared and you can see all the different hot and cool portions of your face. It's pretty interesting. Um, even longer wavelength than that is microwaves and then radio waves are our longest wavelength part of the spectrum. So we have short wavelengths, high frequencies, high energy at the gamma ray side, and then long wavelengths, uh, low frequency, low energy on the radio side. And the visible part of the spectrum that we can see is just a tiny slice. Um, because we measure waves in units of length, then different waves have wavelengths that correspond to different objects of interest. So things like atoms and DNA have sizes commensurate with light wavelengths in the X-ray. Um, infrared and uh, the width of human hairs is in the micrometer range. So that falls within the infrared. Um, things like ants or sand, um, small objects are in the microwave. Uh, you can actually map out the wavelength of your own microwave by putting a big bar of chocolate in it and not letting it rotate. Um, and then radio waves are long, so on the order of, you know, things in the room or even a whole state. All right, so which color in the visible spectrum has the longest wavelength? Um, I'm just going to give you 10 seconds to write this into the chat. All right, sure. Red, orange is close. So the long wavelength side is red and our short wavelength side is in the blue violet. And as a result, um, astronomers use red and blue as shorthand for long and short wavelengths, but they don't always literally mean red and blue. So this will come up, especially when we talk about Doppler shift. And we're not saying that an object will shift its wavelength to become red, but it will become longer wavelength, so redder, or shorter wavelength, bluer but it doesn't always mean that it emits light in the visible range. Astronomers like to do this that kind of thing, so my apologies. All right, not all of the parts of the electromagnetic spectrum make it through Earth's atmosphere. Some parts of the electromagnetic spectrum are blocked by um, gases in our atmosphere or by the, I guess, gases Ozone, the ozone layer is part of that. So things like gamma rays, x-rays, and part of the ultraviolet range, those are for the most part blocked by our atmosphere. And so it's only a small window of ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light that we actually receive on the ground. And so this is the so-called optical window. And it's the main reason why a lot of our um, space telescopes are in space, because that way they're outside of the atmosphere and they, you don't have to worry about this effect. There's also a radio window. So some radio wavelengths can um, transmit through Earth's atmosphere. And so that's why we have um, arrays of radio telescopes on the ground. And these are usually um, at the you know, tallest points on Earth, the highest elevations we can find because then there's a thinner layer of atmosphere for those waves to come through. 